starting this over. <laughs> uh, my name is Amy. Welcome back to my channel. This is a channel about crafting, mostly cross stitch, but I do occasionally talk about crochet, diamond painting, um, sewing, and anything else that I might take upon myself to do. So today is the 25th and also a week since I did my last floss tube, so I thought that I should get on here and start recording something. I also, hold on, wanted to do the Know Your Needleworker tag, which I conveniently forgot to pull up. So I will update you quickly on a couple of things while I look for that. My computer's behind you guys. Um, so yeah, how's everybody doing? Oh. Um, a lot of you guys were asking about the, um, the D-Stash, um, the D-Stash thing that I was going to do with the Joy Sunday kits and all of the other patterns that I had. Um, I, I'm going to do a video and what I want to do in the video is put up the items and you guys can claim the item below. I will give you the name of the pattern. You have to say the name of the pattern in your comment and then I will give it like three days. I will put on there when um, to do it and then I will go based off the comments or I'm thinking of doing a Google Doc where you can just go and fill out the Google Doc with the names of the patterns that you want. Um, but I think a comment is easier because you can go back and edit your comment if you want to add to it. And then if more than one person claims the pattern, I will randomly draw for that person. I think it just makes it more fair because of the way that I'm doing it. It's not going to be like a live video or anything like that. Um, I think that's just the best way to go about it. I still have a project on my Lowry that I need to take off and I still haven't done a Lowry video either. So yeah, let's do the Know Your Needle Worker tag because I haven't done, I used to do these videos on here called Who the Fuck Am I? And I haven't done one of those in a really long time. And I think I need to do something like that. So I've never done this tag before, so we're going to do it. So it says, where do you live? I live in, let me see. Southeast New Mexico um, so yeah it's pretty Hispanic culture my last name gives nothing away because my last name is actually my husband's last name my husband is actually half Spanish half white um, his dad is from like Idaho I think and his mom's family's from Mexico and so it's you know my husband actually grew up speaking Spanish because my mother-in-law speaks Spanish and so he's fluent in Spanish, I am not. And I grew up in a fully Spanish household. None of the grandkids learned how to speak Spanish from the parents or the grandparents. And I don't even think all of my aunts and uncles can speak it. I think a handful of them are fluent in it and then the other handful aren't. So, you know, it is what it is. That has nothing to do with the question, which is where I live, which is New Mexico. Um, what do you do for a living? I have been a stay-at-home mom pretty much for the past 10 years and I've dabbled working from home um, more so I've always done something but never anything significant enough that provided income to where I could say um, you know I support the family or I pay a lot of the bills or whatever um, about let's see about nine years ago or so we I started a handmade soap company and that didn't pay the bills but it gave us a lot of pocket money that we spent on the weekends we'd go to the movies we have a big family so every time we go to the movies it's minimum two hundred dollars and it was fun um now I sell the diamond paintings and you know do a couple of other little things on the side um do I have any children yes I have three biological children and three stepchildren um, of these six, four of them currently live with us. Um, they range in age from 23 to seven years old. Do I have any pets? If you guys have been following me for any length of time, then yes, you know that I have a lot of pets. I will put pictures here. I'm gonna start from the oldest to the youngest. So we have Gumball. He is my old man. I call him old man because he is six years old this year in roughly May. He turns six years old and 
we've had him pretty much the whole time that we've lived here in New Mexico this time. I'm originally from New Mexico, but we've moved around a lot. And um, this last time that we've lived here, we've had him the whole time. And then we have Apollo. He is our, he will be five this May, year old German Shepherd. And he's a pain in the butt, but he is an excellent guard dog. Um, let me see who's next. And then we've had a couple of cats in between. We had rehome one because she was dumped on our doorstep by a friend. And we rehomed her because she was really mean to the little kids. And then we had Jelly Bean. I'll put a picture of him here. He passed away. We had him for a year. He died. Um, he got really sick. He got that feline infectious disease. I don't know the proper name for it, but it's basically like if they get that, their chances of survival are pretty slim. And then we got um, Cookie, who's here. She was a kitten when we got her. There was some controversy at her age when we got her at the vet. No, no, no. The shelter. She, her, um, tag on the door said that she was um, four months old and then her paperwork when they looked in the system said she was nine months old so when they printed me out all of the paperwork some of it said nine months some of it said four months and they didn't know how old she was and so when I took her to the vet later they told me that she ended up being closer to nine months old and had I have known that she was that old when we got her she was just small um, I probably wouldn't have gotten her because you do run into issues where the cats just don't bond with the family and I feel like that's what the issue is with her. She's so, so shy and timid. She doesn't let anybody hold her except for the two little girls. I don't know what it is about the girls, um, but she just loves the little girls. My stepson and his girlfriend are just loud all the time. Yeah, she doesn't let any of the adults hardly pet her. If you sneak up on her and start petting her, she'll let you pet her for a couple of seconds until she realizes what's going on and then she bails. Um, and then we have Butter. He is a year and a half. We got him at the same shelter as well that we got Cookie. And um, he's a pain in our butts. And then there is, um, oh, Athena. I forgot Athena. We've got her in the middle somewhere along all these pets. She's also a German Shepherd, supposedly. I think she's half German Shepherd, half Corgi, maybe. She definitely has that Corgi butt, but I don't know. My husband doesn't want to do a DNA test on her, and I do, because it's like 100 bucks. I think I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, Athena. And then my stepson moved in and brought his two dogs with him, so he's got uh, Aria, which is another German Shepherd. I don't know how old she is. I think six, seven months old, he said. And then they've got this little thing, uh, Chloe. I don't know what she is, Schnauzer or something? She looks like an old man. Um, yeah, that's it, that was really long. So what are your other hobbies besides stitching? Diamond painting, sewing, um, reading. I used to have my bookshelves in here, I don't anymore. Uh, crocheting, all the things, pretty much. My favorite movie, um, I don't have one particular favorite movie, but movies I can watch over and over again. Um, all the Avengers movies, uh, the DC movies, like Superman, I can rewatch those over and over, the ones with Henry Cavill. Um, what else? Harry Potter. Like that, I really like the fantasy genre. My favorite TV show, I have tons and for me when it comes to movies and tv shows you have to tell me what genre if you ask me what my favorite tv show is i'm gonna ask you what genre because i love criminal minds i love supernatural um mostly i like fantasy shows but i like the show you uh game of thrones uh stranger things riverdale i'm all over the place my favorite book again genre i don't have a favorite book but I have plenty of book series that I love. Um, Harry Potter is one of my favorite book series. Um, I really like uh, Oh, The Magicians. That's another show. I have the books, but I haven't read those yet. And then I really like psychological 
thrillers to a lot of James Patterson books. And I also read a lot of books written by psychologists that are true stories, things like that. Um, my favorite music, um, I mostly stick to music in the rock genre, all types of rock. I don't like hip hop. I don't like R&B, things like that. It just doesn't jive with me, but I'm okay listening to some country and um, classical music, stuff like that. I really love Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I really love what they've done to some of the older, like Mozart and Beethoven songs. And what word, what one word describes you? There's only 10 questions on this, so. Uh, I don't know. All over the place. One word. crazy <laughs> okay that took a freaking 10 whole minutes so we're done with that now we're gonna get into whips 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 what have I been working on I've been working on a few things so this week I gave quite a bit of attention to mm, I don't have a picture I'll put a picture here because I don't have a picture of it Janessa I actually have a before to and I put about, I think, 1,500 stitches in, maybe a little bit more, and I messed up somewhere. Um, the thing about this is, is that I am doing this, where's the opening? <laughs> Two over one tent, and I have a very difficult time finding the stitches. So what I'm gonna have to do, honestly, is I think I'm gonna have to start over on Pattern Keeper so that I can figure out what the mistake is without having to rip any stitches out and seeing if I can fudge it. So this is where I'm at now. Um, I think I'm two and a half percent done, 2.7 percent done on it. And it's, yeah, I love it because there's so much color blocking done and it works up so fast. But again, mistake just is what it is. It's a heaven and earth design. It is full coverage. This is 28 count. Um, Obviously, all the called for colors you do not convert on the heaven and earth design. Um, did I leave anything out? <laughs> I don't know. There's that. Um, once I I tried to fix the mistake, I really did. I tried, and I could not. I couldn't figure it out, so I gave up and started something new. I I have no business starting anything new. But I did anyway because I was so frustrated and I said, you know what, I'm just going to start this because I can. I had to be very careful with my finger because if you guys are squeamish, it's not even that bad in my opinion. But if you don't like looking at things like this, you might want to fast forward 10 seconds. But I smashed my hand in my car door and I have a lot of bruising across the tip. So I don't know if you guys can tell, like the tips of my fingers are more red than the rest of my finger this happened like three days ago now two nights ago I think and this finger got the brunt of it my fingernail is numb I can't quite feel it when I do this and I can get some tingling like around in here and you can see all of that um, blood pulled underneath I don't know yet but is gonna happen with this I feel like my fingernails about to fall off though I've had it covered up the past two days and I just took my band-aid off before this video um, it seems like it's holding together pretty well except I can't quite feel it very well so anyway my new start uh, Miss Coffee by Barbara Anna this is one of the exclusive kits from Nitka Moscow if I put my face in it you can't see what's happening so I started this for no particular reason other than I wanted to. So well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. It comes with the DMC. And I think, I don't even know what count this is because it doesn't say it anywhere on anything in here, but I think it's 32 count Belfast. And I just did a center start because I had no idea what count this fabric is but I'm pretty sure it's a 32 count and I only did the upper part of her bodice on her thing it's just a brown color I have all three of these kits and the dresses are basically all the same 
um, charting. And that's okay. You know, it is what it is. So I treated myself to that new start after my screw up on Janessa somehow. Um, before that, right after Janessa, or no, I think it was before I was working on Janessa, I was working on Halloween Quaker from Lila Studio. Uh, I started this a teeny tiny bit right in the same week that Michelle Bendy decided to do her, um, like, stitch with me thing like where everybody's stitching this Halloween Quaker thing she's doing um like a stitchy meetup twice a month on zoom I would love to go but I'm such an introvert and she's invited me I had the link last time and I just didn't go I I'm just a freaking weirdo so this is what I have on that I've gotten a lot done since I showed you guys this last time. I don't even think I had the witch done last time, but I did. Um, all of this, I started this. Um, some of these are not finished simply because I, um, the thread ran out. Like here, and I didn't want to pull another thread, and so I just moved on to another color. What I love about this is that you can pick, seriously, like anything, and just start working on whatever. Um, this witch was all 310, so I was kind of a bitch. These bats are a little irritating to do. I don't know why they're so difficult for me to do, but I only have one and a half bats and I have one and a half more bats to do. Um, and then I gotta put the yellow on the candy corn still right here. This is the top of a ghost, the top of a pumpkin. The page ends here somewhere. And then there's a couple more lines and then the page ends again here. But there's still some more stuff to do here, here, and I think another motif here before that page is complete. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit to do. Actually, there's three more motifs that start on that page. So yeah, and apparently I started this. I didn't start this. I did. I put a couple stitches in on this Barbara Anna Spellville. This is something I pull out when I just don't know what to work on. And I don't even know when the last time I worked on this was, but I don't have very much done. I really need to just put this in a Q-snap and work on it because it's not a big project there's that oh and I didn't tell you guys what I was stitching that on so I'll tell you in a minute hold on so that's what I I think I did I started this house and finished up some of the the thread that was on here this dark color and then started this rust color on the house here this is stitched on 32 count Joblin in dusty pink from the stitch me and Halloween Quaker is stitched on 16 count Ada in the colorway Fall, also from the Stitch Me. You're going to notice a theme here when I tie the other two projects, too. So, the next thing I pulled out, out of sheer boredom because I didn't know what to stitch on, was Winchester Mystery House from... Debbie Patrick. This is part of a Victorians Across America series. I have a whole binder full of Debbie Patrick designs and Jay's X Stitch on Instagram started the sale with this. They finished theirs. They didn't do the mystery house. They did another Debbie Patrick, but it was a Debbie Patrick sale. And I severely underestimated how difficult this pattern is. Very. It's super hard. Um, yeah. There's a ton of back stitching. I'm gonna have to do two copies of my working copy because I'm gonna go back in at the end and do the back stitching because I can't mark the back stitching and the stitches underneath it on the same pattern. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and then because it's so hard and like these trees and the bushes are so freaking confetti heavy, it is insane. So yeah, oh, I banged my finger. So this time when I pulled it out, I got all of this brown done under here. These green ones here is what I'm working on. You can kind of see my needle hair. That's what I'm working on right now. I did all of this window here, uh, most of this checkered window here, and everything is going to have back stitching over it. And then I did all of these stitches coming out. These palm trees, this is the end, but they come all the way down. And then that big bush is here. Um, so yeah that's that 
This is a needle ranger that my bestie, Stitchy Bestie Sprinklestein, sent me. Super cute. And then this is stitched on, no surprise, 18 count blue from the Stitch Me. What can I say? <clears throat> then, my husband's phone's ringing. He left it on the counter. No surprise there either. So, this is drinking coffee. Okay. Next thing is. <clears throat> I think I talked about this. I can't remember. Um, do, 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 do. What's it called? I think I showed you guys this already. I haven't worked on it in the past several days. And so if I showed it, I'm showing it again. I'm sorry. It just is what it is. Sometimes it happens. Um, Semi Sane Stitchers is having an Elf of My Bets challenge. And I thought I saw Erin J. Martini Stitcher talking about it. And she was doing a chart. And I was like, Oh, I have a chart like that. I have a Halloween chart like that. And I want to do it. Um, how do I get in? Because you need a password to get in. So I have this. I think she's doing a Christmas one. This is the Halloween sampler from Cottage Garden Samplings. And somebody sent it to me. Amy sent it to me a couple of months ago. And I've had it in my stash. And I thought this is absolutely perfect to do the alpha my beds except I forgot to post my starting photo and so D is ending I think in two days and so I'm waiting for um, the thread to come for the letters the A B C D and then I'm going to stitch the D and then in two days I will put my photo to do the E um, and then I will be on track because if you don't post in the group every so often you get kicked out and so I want to make sure that I at least do this challenge so I'm okay for now um plus it gave me super incentive to work on this and Amy Amy gave me these scissors Ravenclaw these are super heavy and these little cat ones I have another one of these floating around here somewhere that I'm supposed to send back to her and I didn't no surprise there either so I'm stitching this on 32 count Joe Blinn in the colorway Tree Hugger by the Stitch Me. And you can't see where I'm at. <laughs> I did the A, I did the B, um, I have not done C, and I did almost all of the D. I have a couple more stitches here for the D, but I stopped because um, my thread ran out. So I think I have like three or four stitches here maybe five to finish that so I'll have to finish that before I start um, the E but the E is gonna go here and that's it and then I just got to do the ABCD part and I'll be on track for this challenge but I love stitching on Joblin I think Joblin is my fabric of choice for most things and even though I don't have enough of it just because when I first started stitching I was such a tight ass and I was kind of like an Ada snob where I had to stitch on Ada and then my hands started hurting and realized that I needed to be more open-minded <laughs> and then I'm gonna show you guys this because I haven't showed it and I've been talking about it a lot and I never showed you guys this is the ink circles all together now I was stitching these for my sister for Christmas so it's the first base and doo -doo -doo. here comes treble are these two and I gave gifted those to her for Christmas and I still had this one that I didn't finish because when I first started it my cat puked on it and I had to throw it away so I had to restart it on a different piece of Ada this is just a piece of blue 14 count Ada from Hobby Lobby before I stopped shopping there you can't quite tell but it does have some white modeling to where it almost looks like the sky when the sky has those very soft clouds in it um, and I started way over here I don't know why but there's quite a bit that comes out on this side see and so I would say I'm about halfway done with this and oh this is the one that I lost my needle in the car if you didn't see that post it's on my Instagram yeah so there's that I just haven't showed it. I haven't worked on it in a while but this is um, I kept telling you that I was gonna show you guys and then I never did so there's that and then, let me see, what else? 
I don't think, what was the one? I don't know. So then I just have the teensy tiniest bit of haul. Um, mostly, okay, so this was actually a freebie because I bought two plus kits from Nitka Moscow. And this was, it says here, um, thank you for buying two kits by Barbara Anna and Nitka Moscow. Please enjoy this gift pattern from us. And it's a cute little, like, um, looks like a teacup turned into a pin cushion thing. And it's so freaking cute. So I took that out of my out of the Barbara Anna kit because it was in the Miss Coffee one and um, I'm going to put this into my binders to stitch one day. Um, and then a couple of things. So, well let me go through this first. Michelle Bandy released this for free from her I think it was on Patreon to her patrons because, or no, her patrons and her YouTube join because I am a member of her YouTube channel and it's the acceptance chart. This was, I believe it's a Michael J. Fox quote if I'm not mistaken and originally she was doing donations to the charity and then she released it for free with, you, you could do the donations if you wanted to but you didn't have to. And so I went ahead and downloaded that. So that's going to go on my stash. You know, I have several bendy patterns and I haven't done any of them. The only one that I did was the, um, the little haunted house that she did back in September. That's it. So that's the only chart that I got and it was free. Then it's not the only chart I got, but it's the only chart I downloaded myself. Does that make sense? Probably not. No, what all that racket is. I don't know what they're doing. Then, um, I got this yard of 20 count Ada from, um, Mercari. So I had a credit on Mercari. So Mercari, if you didn't know, I have a link in the description box, but it's kind of like eBay. There's no bidding though, but it's like a secondhand thing. You can go on there and you can buy things and there's a ton of cross stitch stuff. So, um, I had like some credits. So if you sign up for Mercari, there's a link in the description box. When you make a purchase, you get, I think it's $10 and I get $10, um, for using that link. If you sign up on my link. And so I had a couple of people use it and I had $20 saved in Mercari from that and I saw this piece of 20 count Ada on there so with shipping I think this was $17 for one yard of the 20 count Ada so lately I have been liking doing I've been I test stitched 20 count and 22 count to do two over one full crosses on this for full coverage because I'm really liking two over two full coverage on 28 count which is what I'm doing my Harry Potter full coverage piece on absolutely loving it and I really like the full cross for some reason it just makes my mind feel better and so I when I saw this I had to get it, it was like 12 something with shipping which was five dollars I think um so yeah a full yard of 20 count Ada so I think I can get two pieces off of this at least depending um but I, I don't know if I need a piece for one of my tilting crafts charts. I don't think I do. I think I have it. But it's either going to be a heaven and earth or heaven and earth. <laughs> but I could probably get two minis on here or one bigger chart. So I got that. That's going to, I need to find a spot for that because it's pretty big. And then Amy gifted me this. So Whistle Stop Stitcher. I got some patterns from them before and I kept calling it Whistle Top. It's whistle stop. I was thinking whistles top. I don't fucking know. Whistle top. And I had this in my cart for the longest freaking time because Amy and I buy patterns for each other. And um, Sprinkle Steam, because it's a ton of Amy's. Uh, 
I just hadn't gotten around to it because I've been busy lately that we spent the night at my father-in-law's last week and then a bunch of shit. And so I never bought it. And so I kept thinking, oh, I got to buy those shirts. I got to buy those shirts. And the good thing I didn't because Amy bought hers like immediately. And so she brought it up yesterday and she's like, did you get it? I said, no, I've been meaning to get a copy from you. And she's like, no, 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 no. I already got it. I already got it. I'm going to get one for you too. So she um, purchased a second one for me. And I do have proof that she actually purchased it. Yes. So we did it legally. And this is Chester's place. And so it's so freaking cute. It's charted, I think, in all weeks, Dye Works. But I... Weeks Dye Works, one classic color works, and then the rest are gentle arts. But I, I think I only had two of them called for, and then I converted the rest. And so I hope that it works. The two called for I had were these two, and then I converted the rest. Um, it uses quite a bit of the green... On. quite a bit of the green I'm going to point with it no, I better not <laughs> it is quite a bit of the green around the border here because it is the border and then it's also the grass these little trees here um, a little bit in the stems here and so it uses more than an eight yard skein more than a DMC skein actually no it uses it said 75 percent of a DMC skein because I did the calculation but I didn't want to use the DMC colors, um, one, because I didn't want to dig through my stash, and two, because I really wanted to use Fancy Floss. So, um, Weeks Dye Works, I don't know about Gentle Art because it doesn't say, but Weeks Dye Works and Classic Color Works are only five yard skeins. So if I would have done five yard skeins, I wouldn't have had enough with one skein and I would have needed to purchase floss if I would have chose a weeks that I had on my stash or a classic color works on my stash so I decided to choose a Victoria motto green for that and I chose dusty green I think it's absolutely perfect the difference between Victoria motto and all the other fancy floss is Victoria motto you a lot of the time you can't tell it's variegated and so that's the thing that I kind of feel like eh about but it's okay because Victoria motto skeins I think are 10 yard skeins if I'm not mistaken maybe more um, so I know I'll have plenty to do that. And then the house. The house is charted in Weeks Dye Works. Brick. And I changed it to another Victorian motto. Red School House. I toned it down. So a lot of the colors in here are quite bright. Like the reds. Um, I toned them super down. And the orange and the cat too because that's Chester. Um... I toned it down it's not as bright as it's showing on here it's a lot darker to what I think looks more like a brick and so of what I had anyway it's called Red School House and then this is the one that I'm not sure about because um, I needed something for the pillars which is all the white in here and the chicken the white on Chester um, a little bit of white on the lamb and I don't have, I'm not going to use DMC, any shade of white of DMC because I hate white. And you also needed quite a bit of this. So I chose Frosty Lemon from Victoria Model, which has a slight yellow hue to it. It's not as bright as it's showing on there. So it's more pale than what it's showing. And I think it's going to look fine on the house. But the animals is what I'm not sure about. I guess they're just going to look like dirty animals, which is what farm animals really look like, right? I don't know. I'm just torn. If the whole skein was the color that's showing right here, don't look at my finger, right here, I feel like it'd be absolutely perfect, but I don't have anything even remotely close to this when it comes to this kind of color. You can see, like, I absolutely love Victoria Model Floss. I just, you don't get a lot of colors at least I don't like look at my pink section compared to my green and blue section you know my orange section is quite small you know compared to my purple section and so you don't get a lot of variation in the colors but I think this is gonna be okay right let me know what you guys think and then everything else is converted to this is the orange I chose for the cat another Victoria model it's not as bright as it's coming out on there it's more dark that's called Dusky Tangerine, which I think is an absolutely perfect color for it, too. And then the rest, it, I converted into classic color works that I had. Um, like, these are used for the horse. 
This is used in some of the flowers and some of that border, and then this is used in the windows. I changed it to Gentle Arts Onyx. It uses Gentle Arts Cast Iron Skillet. I didn't have, so I chose Onyx, and it's 500 stitches, so I should be fine using these smaller skeins. So hopefully this comes out good and I chose a piece of Be Stitch Me's 18 count Ada. It does not have a color weight on it. I think it's called Wet Cement and I think it'll be fine, right? So there's that. I'm going to start that sometime soon. I'm not a big sampler person at all, but for some reason I really like stitching these borders. I don't know why. And then this house, I'm kind of excited to stitch it because I like stitching in Victoria Motto so much. <clears throat> I was hoping I had like a 32 count, but I didn't just because I like stitching on even weave. It is good too. And then that's something else that I did. I made myself another project bag using um what is her name is it kindred stitcher i think if i'm wrong i'll correct myself here using her pattern i made this one smaller because her original pattern is quite large so i made a smaller one um i like both sizes Ex this won't fit my 11 by 11 q snap which is fine um but the bigger size will and so I'm torn whether I need to want to keep doing this size or I want to do the other size but my stitching is getting so much better um on here my zipper is a little crooked but that's okay but like as far as my seams go um so I'm super proud of myself for like my edges are fantastic like they just look so much better than they were before and her pattern is amazing that's what that looks like. My edges look nice. Oh, and then my inside. I always put my, I don't care which way my zippers face. So I feel like they're always backwards because I think they're supposed to go the other way. I don't know. I might be wrong. And I just chose this random, like, I don't even know what this is called. Inside damask. Is this damask? Mm -hmm. See my edges? They look so much better than they used to. Um, with the top stitch here. They used to be like all freaking crooked and uneven, but they're, they're nice. So yeah. Okay. And then in this, so Erin Two Martini Stitcher has more information on this. Um, in her, I don't think it's her most recent floss tube, but I think it's the one before that. It's a couple of videos ago because I don't know when this is going. I think this is going up tomorrow. Um, so a while back last year sometime, Sarsi Girl came up with this um, pandemic sampler and it's a free pattern and it's gorgeous. And that border, uh, yikes. So she came out with this pattern and everybody, somebody came up with this brilliant idea to start it in March at the one year anniversary of the pandemic, the shutdown in America. And I loved that idea. I've been looking for an excuse to start this. And I think that's it. I haven't... Oh, I did choose a piece of fabric. I hope it's big enough and I hope I measured correctly. So hers is kind of dark on here. And I'm using 16 count Storm Ada from Be Stitch Me, of course. I think it's... Hers is more brown, but I think this is a good match. And... Whatever I don't have in DMC, I am going to sub for Fancy Floss. So, yeah. I have a couple of DMC in here because I only went through my bobbins. I found the other door. But I only got one, two, three, four, five. I only got seven of the colors so far because I haven't looked through my other thread storage. And it calls for... 19 colors so I still need 12 more colors which isn't a big deal because I know I have at least half of those and the rest I'm going to do DMC I just hope I have the house colors um I don't know what color this house is I'd have to check to see because I might set that for something else if it's white it's not white 
because the lightest color they have in here is 3866, which looks like an off-white. So yeah, that's the plan for that. I don't know if I'm going to start it. A lot of people are starting it March 1st, and then other people are starting it like the first day that the lockdown happened where they lived, which I think Erin Tumartini said she was doing hers, I think, on the 16th because that was the last time that her kids went to school, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And so I think I'm going to also do the day that they announced the lockdown here in my state, which I believe was a Friday. So that's what I'm going to do. Those are my plans. That's about all I have planned. Um, do you hear the music? Jeez, that's my husband in the garage. It's almost three o'clock. I think I'm going to run to the store. I don't know. I need to put these in some chart covers. And then, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some new floss tubers and who I watch. I notice a lot of people doing this shout out thing, and I think it's really neat. Um, so lately, new floss tubers that I have been watching, people that have, um, are in their like first handful of floss tube videos today, um, not today, but, um, cataloging my stitches so she lives in Philadelphia if I'm not mistaken and she is a rare book librarian which is amazing um, I just I love her videos I saw her first video when she first came out with it and then um, I have just been caught up on her ever since she I just watched her most recent video yesterday and I'm just really enjoying her videos um, and then Belushi Stitches is also another newer floss tuber. Um, I'm really enjoying her. Um, there was somebody else that I watched this morning who stitches nothing but full coverage. She's also in Canada. I'll put her name here because I loved her videos too. Um, and she sti show stitches basically nothing but full coverage. And she showed so many Heaven and Earth Designs charts in the video that I saw this morning. I'll put her name here because I loved her video too. And I will try to link everybody below. And then, of course, my normal go-to's that I don't miss a single video from is Amy Sprinklestein Stitches. Her name is not Amy Sprinklestein Stitches. Her YouTube channel is Sprinklestein Stitches. Um, Gidge, Creativity by Gidge, another Amy. Her name is Amy as well. Love her. And then, of course, Erin Two Martini Stitcher, Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Those are my top people that I watch, no matter what. Um, but yeah, definitely check out those new floss tubers. I think it's important to share um, up and coming people, especially people that catch your eye um, to just, you can't have enough stitching, right? Like, especially when you're just watching floss tube, it allows me to live vicariously through other people and stops me from purchasing things because I get to see them stitch it. And if there's a pattern where I'm just like, man, that's pretty, but I don't think I'd stitch it. I get to see them stitch it and it satisfies my hunger for purchasing. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. Anyway, I think that's it you guys this time. Anyway, I have nothing coming in the mail except for the ABCD pattern, not the pattern, the ABCD floss that I ordered from the little thread shop, Margaret. She's my go-to for gentle arts, and classic color works I get from her my camera is moving I had to pause because my son came down with his girlfriend and they're just really loud rowdy people <laughs> oh look at here comes Chloe come here Chloe oh. this is her dog Chloe she is a really weird dog she has a beard and she looks like an old man I think that's it guys um i keep saying that and then here i still am oh my floss wall i shared this on my vlog which you have access to if you're a member of my channel i think it's the second tier and my patreon my husband made this um the pieces of wood so we took a 12 foot piece of like edging i think it's like 12 by one inch and cut it into these three even pieces um my wall here comes down so we did them on a slant so that it would be because i have french doors here so they kind of meet at an angle um and i wanted room to grow 
And my problem, you can see here, these white spots are from the command hooks that I had hanging before. They kept falling off. And they say that they have a one pound capacity per hook. That is a fucking flat out lie because they held, I don't know, a mm, couple of ounces of floss and they were freaking falling. So I asked my husband if there was something we could do. He came up with this idea. So the pieces of wood are screwed into the sheetrock with anchors and then I glued the um, command hooks onto the wood panels with Loctite power grab glue and it comes in a small tube like an eight ounce tube and it's a freaking amazing I let them dry overnight and those babies are not going anywhere so I have room to grow um, I had run out of hooks to fill up this one so I just started hanging my floss because I needed to get them out of the way but I'm gonna move them here to start from the red to go up this way and this way and I just keep them in rainbow order as far as fancy floss because a lot of places don't chart especially since a lot of my stashes we try and model so I just do them in rainbow order that's it that's the only update that I have oh you guys also said you wanted to see a kidding up video or a kitted up video of all of the things that I have kitted because I have one two three-ish bins of stuff that I have kitted that I haven't started so that's gonna be a thing to along with the sale video which I'm gonna try to maybe record this evening if not that's my priority for tomorrow is to get that video up and that's it so I bid you guys adieu and I'll see you guys in the next video whenever that may be